What's up? I'm Jen. Today I'm doing the Closet Confidential Tag, which is a series of questions about your wardrobe. I was tagged by the lovely Miss Essie Button, so thank you so much for tagging me. So let's get started with the first question. I was originally going to show you my old Spongebob t-shirt that I got when I was 8 years old in Las Vegas, but I can't seem to find it right now, but here's an old photo of me wearing it at the gym. So I'm going to show you my second oldest item in my closet. I stole it from my brother's closet when I was 11 years old, and this is when I was just kind of experimenting with more of a edgier style, I suppose. <laughs> it's just a pale yellow graphic tee with this really gory woman walking some Dalmatians. It's a really intense t-shirt and I just thought I was just so cutting edge wearing this to school and my brother James would scold me every single time he saw me wear that shirt. He was just kind of like, why did you take that from my closet? My newest item is this semi-sheer crop top by Thea by Thara. They're based in Thailand, but they ship internationally. And I love this shirt because it is so luxurious and well-made. There's so much depth in this top with the subtle bubbles and the shadows down the middle. I think it's perfect to wear with some classic black skinnies for the remaining of winter. And once spring rolls around, I can switch it up with some white skirts or something. I don't have a clothing item that is designer per se, but I do have these Kenzo boots that I got as a gift from New York Fashion Week. Thank you so much, Henry. I freaking love these boots. They're amazing. I think the squared off toe makes the shoe really unisex, meaning a boy or a girl could totally rock these. I would have to say my cropped long sleeve that I got at Forever 21. I think it was around $8 at max. This top is perfect because I have a tendency to wear a lot of cropped things, even in the winter time, and this shirt acts as a good first base to help me keep myself insulated. Hands down, my vintage Pink Floyd tee. I got it at the Rose Bowl flea market when I think I was around like 19 years old. I was digging through two huge piles of clothing and I was just kind of ravaging each item and then I just happened to follow along the Pink Floyd tee and like my heart just kind of stopped. When I asked the guy how much it was going to be, I was easily expecting around $50 because that's how expensive band tees are sometimes. And he just said, two bucks. And I don't know, I just, I couldn't explain to you how happy I was. So I gave him the two dollar bills and I bounced out of there and it is still one of my favorite pieces today. It's probably this green pleather jacket that I got online. I honestly have no idea what I was thinking when I put it in my online cart. I think that's one of the cons of online shopping because it's very, very impulsive. <laughs> I had this vision that I was going to like DIY it and put like a sick patch in the back and make it really punk rock but it ended up being a little bit too cropped and like the shoulder pads were a little bit deceiving and I don't know, I have no inclination to wear it right now. Maybe I'll just let it age in my closet a little bit more and get inspired another time. I think this is the question that Estee added to the series and I love it because it's very tricky because I feel as if if I show you something that I love, I feel at least one person will like it with me. I would have to say my mom jeans. I got these from Urban Outfitters. They're from the BDG line and I freaking love them. I think they're a really fun and just casual piece to wear around the streets. You don't see these quite that often. I mean, you see these less than skinny jeans and leggings. And so I think it's really fun to play with different silhouettes on your body. And number one, my warrior's beanie because I gotta rep the bay and it keeps my head warm. Number two is my white mesh top. It has Hawaii in it, and it makes me really excited because I just booked my tickets to Maui for the end of April, and I am so needing this vacation. I wanna travel somewhere where it's warm. So if you're from Hawaii and you're watching and you're from Maui, let me know what things I should do. Looking for something that involves hiking. Number three has got to be my gold slash brass Doc Martens. They are freaking awesome, and they are also very very uncomfortable. I really hope it's an issue about just like breaking them in with some thick socks. I don't know, I'll keep you guys posted. So those are all the questions. If you're watching this, please feel free to answer them as well, either through a video or through the comments down below. And I also tag these people. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will catch you in my next one. Bye! <laughs>
I'm doing my February favorites today, which is a video where I'll recap all the things that I loved last month. I have been loving to do a really heavy, dark, smoky eye and pairing it with a really simple nude lip. And one of my favorite nude shades has been NARS's Belle de Joie. I originally got it in a lip pencil form, but I realized that it was a little bit too high maintenance because I was using it every single night and just sharpening the crap out of it. So I thought I would just kind of go balls to the wall and splurge on the actual lipstick tube. And yes, the formula is a little bit different. The lip pencil is a lot more matte, while the lipstick has a really shiny gloss finish. And this nude shade has been amazing to really allow my eyes to really pop, and it doesn't wash my face out. For my book recommendation, I finished Damned by Chuck Palahniuk, and I just bought it randomly at a bookstore called Moe's in Berkeley. And it was a super fast read. It's about a 13-year-old girl named Madison and her experience in hell. And before you think that this is like a satanic and scary book, it's really not. It's actually like a really hilarious diary entry from a really spoiled girl. The book is very tongue-in-cheek, which is expected in a Polonek novel, and all his characters are filled with like attitude and they're super sassy, especially Madison. She makes a group of friends in hell and it's just kind of like the breakfast club in the sense that there is the jock, there is the beauty, there's the rebel, and so you just kind of follow them along through Madison's eyes and yeah, you just kind of see what happens. One scent that I've been rocking non-stop has been Jo Malone's Nectarine Blossom and Honey Perfume. I picked it up at the JFK airport while I was killing time. I swear, it's the perfect citrus and sweet smell, but it's not really overbearing. It's actually quite subtle. This fragrance is extremely difficult to overdo because even if you spray it like five or six times, it's gonna wear off within two to three hours, which is definitely a con because it is such a splurge, but I've just been dealing with it by just putting the actual bottle in my purse to freshen up whenever it wears off. A piece of jewelry that I have been grabbing for every outfit imaginable has been my metal bead bib necklace that I got at Urban Outfitters. I even wore this thing when I went hiking at Muir Woods, which wasn't exactly the best idea, but... I just wanted to look fly while I was walking around the woods. And I think this necklace is a perfect way to jazz up any plain tee or a button down or even a sweater because I think the gold is the right shade because it's not so gaudy and bright. It's more of like a toned down gold slash brass color. For my film recommendation, I have Alfred Hitchcock's Vertigo. And this was actually my second Hitchcock film that I saw. The first one was Rear Window, which was amazing. But Vertigo just takes the cake. It's about an ex-detective who's hired to spy on his friend's wife because she's been acting extremely unusual. And I'm just going to leave it at that because I do not want to give out any spoilers. One of the many reasons why I love this movie was because it was filmed in San Francisco so it was super trippy to see what the city looked like in the late 50s. And a lot of the locations they shot were places that I frequent all the time, so I got a huge kick out of that. San Francisco was one of the first cities that I fell in love with, like deep down inside. Like, I don't know, I just have an attachment to the city. During February, my nail game changed. I decided to upgrade and get some Butter London products. I have been loving the nail foundation for my base coat. When you apply it, there's a pale peach coat, so it acts like a great base for anything. For my top coat, I've been using Butter London's Hardware, which is like a quick top coat. I used to use Sally Hans's Insta Dry, which was good because it would dry your nails in a second, but it chipped way, way too fast. I, I would say that my nails now last like a week without chipping, which is great. So those are all my favorites. If anything is inspiring you at the moment, feel free to leave it in the comments down below. By the way, I think my last favorites, I had mentioned that I was trying out some different TV shows or I was like looking for a new TV show to get attached to. Thank you everyone who mentioned House of Cards because I am completely sucked into that show. So I guess that's another favorites of mine for February, but it's really bleeding into this month. If you have a Twitter or an Instagram, my username is I'mJenim. You can follow me there if you'd like, and I will see you in my next one. Bye! <laughs>